From seed to flower, gardening takes a lot of work. You have to be patient and do things on purpose. The soil you use has to be healthy. The size of the hole you dig could be different for each plant. Some flowers like more sunlight than others. Some like less water than others. It's important to follow the instructions and be intentional when working with plants. Some plants like hydrangeas require transplant during different seasons. Other plants like orchids need wire wrapped around them for support. And then there was a blue bonnet. There is something unique about it. For unlike the first two flowers, blue bonnets grow on the poorest and most unkept soil. One would never guess this from its bright and proud bonnets, but it's true. The flower's poor soil has never dented it from producing lovely blossoms. Some people are like the blue bonnet, having no control over the soil in which they are planted. Some people grow in the soils that are poor and unkept. Kids from troubled homes are blue bonnet children. Do you know any blue bonnet children? Where is the hope in their story? And how could a church be equipped to serve them? I'm Rosalind, and today we will be exploring these questions and more with the author of the book, The Blue Bonnet Child, Meg Calvin. Welcome, Meg. Thanks for joining me today. You're so welcome. Thank you for having me. So, what inspired you to tell the story of the Blue Bonnet children? Well, the divine nudge to um, build up the local church as a supplemental family has been on my heart for quite a, quite a while. And I wrote about it and researched it in seminary, and then I, I found a way to squeeze, in, squeeze it into every initiative I could at work, and I joined like-minded boards and organizations. And then um, a few years back, I had a health scare, which people will have to read the book to find out what that was about. And uh, during that time, I felt an explicit call in my heart to um, write a highly applicable book for the busy practitioner of this work. So, who was your aimed audience for this book? My aimed audience. I think it's tempting sometimes to leave this dark work up to the professionals of the courtrooms and counseling sessions, but the, the truth of the matter is many of these kids will most likely not ever see a counselor or, or have a caseworker or be in a courtroom and so the church family can be equipped as the, the supplemental family. While this is a theological book, will school teachers benefit from reading it? Yes, most of the time, the biggest troublemaker in a group of students comes from a troubled home. And while it's easy to think I can't really make a difference, all I can do is pray, um, report it to a caseworker, and then hope for the best, that, that's not the case. And the meat of this book is the AAA approach. And the AAA approach is to be aware of a child's story, to um, advocate for a child's needs, and then articulate, to theologically articulate how the Holy Spirit is at work to heal in the midst of their poor soil. And in this, in this book, teachers can be even more equipped than they already are to work with kids of troubled homes through a... Um, a discussion guide, an online class where they can get CEUs, um, sample lessons, sample worships, flows, sample policies, and more hope-filled stories than a little 102-page book can contain. So definitely teachers of the nonprofit world, the private secular school systems would definitely benefit from this book. While there are many uh, books out there on this subject matter, what makes this ministerial book unique? It is not an autobiography, nor is it a textbook. It is short and hope-filled for the, the busy practitioner of this work. And so that, that sets it apart, uh, I think, from other books, that it's, it's highly applicable and it's concise. So who were the authors that inspired you? I would like to think, although <laughs> I'm sure my work doesn't, but I would like to think my, my writing style emulates the works of um, Todd Whitaker, 
Joan Chittister, and Miranda Hart. And this is a varied group of leaders. They're, they're, um, they're leaders in education and spiritual formation and then comedy. Um, they, their works daily inspire me. They are all super busy practitioners like I am, and the pages of their works show this. And I have really, really enjoyed it lately when readers of the book come up to me and they say, oh my gosh, your book was surprisingly witty, and <laughs> or your book was so filled with hope. It was just so full of light. And um, the other day someone said, I, I had no idea that I could make a difference. I never thought of approaching it that way. So um, while this subject matter could have been introduced in a book in a very dark way, because it is, it, it can be dark work. I, I wanted, I aimed to write about it in a way that was hope-filled and, and um, hope-filled and helpful and just highly equipping to the, the reader. So how could folks stay connected with you or buy the book? Folks can stay connected with me on uh, my website, at my, visit me at my website, thebluebonnetchild.com. They can like me, find me, follow me on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. Um, if they want to know any information about how they can earn continuing education units, they can visit my website and find out more information about that. What is the name of the website again? TheBlueBonnetChild.com. Well, folks, up your surf. And remember, while the story of the Blue Bonnet Child is heavy, in Christ working through you, there is hope.